How's it going everyone? Today we're going to do the front brake pads on the Discovery 1. Start off by loosening the wheel nuts and now we're just going to jack the car up and remove the wheels. that's the wheels off I noticed when we did the clutch that the front pads were getting a bit low and now they're very low this pad the inner pad is pretty much non-existent and the outer pads not got a lot left on it and when I turn the steering wheel I've noticed today, you can just hear a bit of grinding and it started scoring the disc so they need replacing ASAP now at the minute I've not got the time to replace the discs so we're just going to swap the pads it's only this front right side that's started scoring so hopefully I've caught them in time Now the reason that I'm not going to swap the discs is because I have plans for the front brakes. I'm planning on upgrading to the Defender 110 calipers and discs. Uh, they're a little bit bigger, a bit heavy duty, a bit more heavy duty, so should stop the car a bit better. So the first job we've got is to remove these split pins from the pads. As some of you may realise that I've actually got 200 TDI pads in these calipers and the reason behind that is the 300 TDI pads 
actually rattled backwards and forwards in the caliper so when you were driving down the no road you could just hear a ticking noise it was the pads rattling backwards and forwards so I tried the 200 TDI ones and the pins actually hold them in place so they don't rattle I think they're a better design so we're going to remove these split pins take these springs off give them all a clean up take the pads out put new pads in springs back in split pins back in jobs are good one. Resorted to mole grips. There we go. One knackered brake pad. Next. Oof, that's shocking. Look at that. That's down to the metal. Shouldn't have been left that long. that's both pads removed as you can see one's got a little bit of life left in it and this one is absolutely shot right down to the metal and it has been touching the disc which isn't good these should have been serviced well over a year ago but things have happened in family life and work and let me forget about the brakes I won't be doing that again so we're going to clean this all up give it all a good squirt with the uh, brake cleaner clean all the rust off the disc and then put the new pads in now we're going to put the spreader in and we're going to move the pistons back When you're doing this, you should always make sure you take the lid off the brake fluid reservoir because obviously you're pushing the fluid back up. Be careful that it doesn't overflow as well. Obviously you're pr pushing the fluid back into the reservoir so it might overflow, just keep your eye on it. Nicely, actually. Well, that's the calipers all cleaned up and the pistons pushed back. The discs also been cleaned up and I've scraped all the excess rust off the edge and just cleaned it up around here. Like I say I'm not going too far into town with it because I'm going to be replacing these soon. 
So we've got the other side to do and then we can put the pads in. So that's everything cleaned up. It does say in the manual to replace these springs and the split pins but a quick wire brush and a straighten up in the vise and they're as good as new so there's no need for that. Got the new pads here, we'll get these open and we'll see what the difference is with the old ones. Me and my box opening skills. I've got a new knife though. These are Terra Firma performance front pads for a 200 TDI. We'll do a comparison, old versus new. Right, so let's get these pads in. New gloves because you want to keep the pads as clean as possible. You don't want any contaminants on them, any grease or anything like that. Got a bit of copper grease. That should help to prevent squeal. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of copper grease on the edge. smear on the back and you just slide it in mm -hmm. And then you want the shims on. Make sure you get them in the right way around. And then you split pin. Obviously if you're putting in new parts it all look a bit cleaner but there's no need. These all work perfectly. I'm also going to give these a little smear of grease as well. Stop them seizing up. Because I will be servicing these a bit more regular and that's pretty much it get your screwdriver I tend to bend the largest tab over Screwdriver in, bend it up. Top of the hammer, that looks 
Looks another place. There you go. One side done. Slowly losing daylight now. So over this side we've got a pad with a wear sensor. Now if your vehicle doesn't have wear sensors, uh, just get your knife out. Just cut it off. You don't need it. <clears throat> Same as before, bit of copper grease on, slip them in, job's a good one. It's just a steering, <laughs> it's not a wheel bearing. on the ground now final job is to torque all the wheel nuts now I torque them up to 130 Newton meters that's what it says in the book anyway Job done. So I hope this has been of some help to you at least. Thanks for watching. See you next time.